Hey, it's Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, July 4th. So happy July 4th to those of you who celebrate. Very important, uh, right out of the gate. We have to focus on the most positive thoughts, the most positive energy, the most positive vibration here today. As many of you already know, uh, we have the Large Hydron Collider being ramped up to its fullest potential, highest electricity going. It is the biggest experiment that they've run thus far, and it is very important that we focus on the timeline, the goals, the vision, the dream that we want to be living in as they run these experiments. Let's override the narrative, override their script, let's totally ruin their experiment, and let's jump into the most positive timeline scripted for humanity. If you want to know more about what it is that I'm talking about, please tune into this week's Ascension Forecast. Even last week's Ascension Forecast, we kind of dabbled in uh, what the whole CERN facility is and what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Um, but just know that today, especially in the U.S., being July 4th, it's a high energy day. If you can refrain from alcohol, that would be great because, of course, that lowers our inhibitions. It gives them room and opportunity for negative vibrations and frequencies to be kind of put out into the cosmos. We want to be as aligned, as grounded, as future focused on the most positive timelines, positive opportunities as possible. So with that being said, be very cautious of yourself today, what it is that you're focused on, the kind of energy that you have and what it is that you are allowing to take place in your inner dialogue and of course in your exterior realm. We have the moon in Virgo all day, very interesting uh, kind of compilation of energies here. Virgo energy ruled over by Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, our inner dialogue, our outer dialogue, how it is we communicate information coming in, how we kind of formulate a perspective about that, how we express ourselves going outward. However, this Virgo energy is an earth energy, meaning we are focused on the physical realm. This is very much a time when we are able to have the right narrative to speak into existence what it is we want to see happen. That's why, again, it's very important to keep very mindful of the vibration and frequency of your inner thoughts and of the energy that you're projecting out in the cosmos here today. And Virgo energy, we're getting organized. We're getting shit done. We are analyzing information. We are analyzing our lives where there's been chaos. We are trying to create order. We are very productive in our physical realms, highly OCD, tapping into our perfectionism to actually want to see new systems, new foundations, new structures be implemented where we can get organized, where we can actually see the rewards and the fruits of our labor. So emotionally speaking, this is helping us really kind of analyze what's been going on in our realms and being able to kind of piece together what it is that we're thinking and feeling and of course getting our heart and head on the same page because we have to engage the heart and the head in order to actually take action, make things happen here in the physical realm. This is also a very important day because this is Mars and Mercury's last day in their place of power. Mars, of course, in Aries for the last couple of weeks, helping us kind of muster up a brand new courage, bravery, warrior-like spirit to start something new, to initiate a new chapter. Well, we are going to have a totally dramatic shift in Mars's energy when Mars enters into Taurus. Take a look for the July energy forecast and what that astro energy forecast is going to kind of depict for us for the next couple of weeks. Mercury. Also, this is the last day Mercury will be in his place of power in Gemini energy before moving into Cancer energy. There is no coincidence here that Mars and Mercury are at its 29th crisis degree in their respective places of power on the same day that CERN is operating, on the same day that we are aligned with the Sirius star system, which is our spiritual sun downloading light codes. And like I said, very important here today, although it may be a challenge, very important to keep the narrative, keep the focus, keep the dream, keep the vision, keep the vibe as high as possible. So 
Nine different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them involve the moon. The moon right out of the gate is making a very positive aspect to Mercury, its ruler. Mercury rules over Virgo just as it rules over Gemini. Mercury being in Gemini, very powerful energy over our mental plane, over our thoughts, over our information, how it is that we're kind of processing that information and how it is that we're expressing ourselves. The moon being our heart, our soul, our emotions, Mercury being our head, our thoughts, our narratives, blending together, we're getting on the same page, we're kind of analyzing where it is that we felt chaotic, where it is that we need order, where it is that we want a new narrative, a new timeline, a new physical circumstance to actually take place. This is going to put us in a beautiful situation, not only to get our heart and head on the same page and fully understand our emotional depths and of course our mental depths, but be able to communicate it outward if the opportunity arises, if need be. The moon is going to bump into Chiron, the wounded healer, which is in a positive aspect, which is highly suggestive that we're making some very serious mental progress and heart progress. What does this mean? It means that we're having aha moments, it means that we are diving deep into analyzing our thoughts and our emotions. It is essentially where it is that we're seeing the growth, we're seeing the progress, we're seeing our efforts in trying to heal certain thoughts, certain emotions, certain narratives actually take form. It's a very, very important aspect, especially with the situations going on here today. Mercury then goes ahead and bumps into Chiron in a very positive way. And again, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, is having a different perspective of our pain, of our trauma, of our suffering, and where it is that we are actively working on healing that. Not only that, we're able to communicate um, our, I'm going to say, thoughts and feelings around certain situations that maybe caused us some pain and trauma and actually have that heart to heart conversation. Now, we're definitely going to get into the depths of our emotions be able to have those heart to hearts a little bit more easily when Mercury actually moves into cancer energy. Again, check out that astro forecast for a full, uh, full scoop, full story on what we can expect for the next couple of weeks with that particular transit. But Mercury bumping into Chiron in this way, actually, not only in our inner realm is making a lot of sense about our healing process, but if gifted with the opportunity to actually have these heart to hearts with another individual, especially in our personal relationships, it does suggest that we are going to make a lot of progress that what we have to say, our truth, our thoughts, our emotions will be well received and it will kind of lead us into a new stage of healing, stage of connection, stage of intimacy. The moon sextiles the sun. This is a beautiful aspect because a sextile is a harmonious blending of these two energies. The moon, typically speaking, is our emotions, is our unconscious self and highly connected to the past. In Virgo energy, we're analyzing the past. We are restructuring, reorganizing our thoughts, our emotions, because we're able to see things from a different perspective. We are essentially healing and rewriting the inner dialogue and, of course, our inner emotions on situations that we now see from a different set of eyes. The sun, of course, in cancer energy is highly emotional, highly intuitive. We're trying to do a deep dive in our emotions. We're doing a deep dive in our inner child in order to recognize where it is that maybe current patterns and behaviors are kind of coming out of the woodwork because of some unconscious emotions, conditionings that maybe were, we were exposed to um, when we were young, when we were kind of being brought up. The sun is trying to illuminate, shine a bright light on what it is that we need to do, you know, in the here and now to better ourselves. And cancer energy is um, showing us where it is that we need new boundaries in order to protect our emotional selves. We need to build a better foundation built off of safety and security and stability, not only for us, but for those that we love, very connected to the home and the family dynamic. So having the moon in Virgo, having the sun in cancer, we're analyzing our heart, we're analyzing our past, we're analyzing where it is that we've been too connected to old patterns and behaviors and where it is that we need to start fresh and creating something new. The moon will bump into, into Pluto in a way that would suggest that a huge aha moment is shifting the paradigm within our inner dialogue, our perception, our understanding. Pluto is the great transformer. He does a deep dive in our psyche. 
And once we can kind of unlock the aha moments in our psyche and have a different understanding and perception of why certain things needed to happen, especially the negative things that created pain and trauma and suffering in us, when we have that understanding that it's a divine script in order to push us into our fullest power, our fullest potential, our fullest position of authority, suddenly the whole dialogue changes, the whole understanding changes. We have an acceptance. We make peace with certain topics and themes that didn't feel so good at the time because we understand that spiritually speaking, it was necessary to get us in the here and now. And may I remind you, you're exactly where it is that you need to be. Even if you are in a shitty place in life, this is absolutely necessary for the full soul evolution to reach your fullest potential in this particular timeline, in this particular lifetime. The moon, though, is going to square, create conflict, create tension with Venus, the goddess of love and beauty and worth and pleasure. And she's in Gemini, really divided. Yes, her curiosity is peaked. Yeah, we have choices and decisions and paths and directions to kind of choose from. But emotionally speaking, the moon is really wanting to kind of dive into the finer details and this Gemini energy that Venus is sitting in. Although, you know, they have the same ruler, Mercury rules over both Gemini and Virgo, uh, this Gemini energy is a little bit scatterbrained. We want to know everything. We want to learn everything. We want to experience everything. We want to know all of our choices, all of our options, all of our paths, all the directions that we could take. And the moon in Virgo isn't really about quantity. We want to zoom in on the quality of our choices, what it actually means for our worth, for our value, for our happiness, for our joy. What does it mean for our relationships? What does it mean for our money matters? We want to do a deep dive in breaking down the minute details of our choices, of our decisions, so that we are essentially choosing the right path, the right choice, the right decision for our soul's evolution, giving us the most pristine opportunities to be our best selves in relation to the world, right? Like Venus is about relationships, especially like romantic relationships, but it starts with the relationship with ourself first. So we have to do the, I guess, redefining of the details on what we actually find to be pleasurable, happy, joyful, where do we get the most sense of worth, the most sense of value? This is what we have to break down. And the moon in Virgo is helping us to do so. But this particular aspect, because it's a square, is not jiving so well, right? Like we do have to work through the tension, through the pressure of having our heart and our head be at odds for just a second in order for us to actually see the middle ground. Again, Gemini energy offers us extremes, polarized choices, extreme points of view, dualistic options and opportunities in order for us to find the right middle ground for us to walk. The moon is going to bump into Mars in a way that would suggest that this is going to manifest in one of two ways. And I'll break it down for you real quick. Keep in mind, Mars, the god of war, okay, ruler of our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, and yes, our anger and aggression. Keep in mind what is going on today and how the dark force agenda would love nothing more than for everybody to be in a funk, to be triggered and activated and angry, to fight. That is the vibe that they create their storyline off of, their timeline off of. We don't want that. We need to override that. So here's what I will say. We could manifest a situation where we are irritable, where we are impulsive, where we are angry, where we are frustrated, or we could manifest a situation where we use that anger and aggression and frustration and irritability to motivate us, to inspire us, for us to level up, for us to recognize where it is we need to get to work and building and creating a brand new foundation in our lives to bring us happiness and joy, where stability and security are the name of the game instead of chaos and inconsistency, which many of us have 100% not learned to love, but had to experience very much of. So the moon in this case, 
our emotions, Mars in this case, our physical energy and the way we assert ourselves to go after our passion and desires. Don't allow yourself to get frustrated, angry or irritable. And if you do flip it real quick into the passion and desire that you need to act as the catalyst to inspire yourself, to motivate yourself to be better, to go after what it is that you want, to dig in your heels, to actually be able to do the work, to build the foundation of creation that our dreams will be built off of. Again, listen to Mars moving into Taurus, that astro forecast sets it up perfectly why we have to experience this at the crisis degree, the last degree of Aries, before we jump into what is going to be a highly productive, highly stable, highly, highly important time for creation. The moon is going to bump into Chiron in a way that would suggest that we are going to be gifted with an opportunity. When I say gifted, that doesn't necessarily mean that it comes in a pretty package with a fancy bow. Most times we are gifted with an opportunity in a crisis point where we have to stop and pause and act as the observer, our higher self to see where the lesson is instead of reacting, responding out of ego, out of our past patterns and behaviors on autopilot. So the situation is likely coming from an external influence, right? So situations outside of our control where we are being triggered and activated in our deepest, darkest wounds, our pain, our trauma, our memories, our suffering, the whole nine yards coming alive in our face. Why? Well, because if you understood what the Dark Force agenda was trying to accomplish here today, while they're doing their little wonky experiment, you would understand that there are going to be situations weaved in the threads of today to trigger your deepest and darkest negative thoughts and emotions. Are we going to let it happen? No. Why? Because we want new earth. Why? Because we're tired of the pain, the control, the abuse of power, the corruption, the lies. We are tired of it. So in this case, you have to act as the observer. You have to understand that if something is triggering you, something is activating you. First of all, if you give in to that, that you are letting the dark force agenda win. Second of all, if you do so and you give in and you allow the agitation, the frustration and the anger to come out in a way that you will hurt yourself and other people in the process of you projecting your anger and frustration out into the world. What we want to do is we want to be aware. We have a heads up. This is why I do these reports. We have a heads up that the situation is likely to manifest. And in that moment, you're going to take a deep breath. You're going to basically snap the pause button in your mental plane. You're going to say, oh, exactly. I knew this was going to happen. I feel the anger. I feel the agitation. I feel the pain. I feel the trauma coming up like a full force. What am I going to do? I'm going to work through it. This is where you're going to adopt a very positive inner dialogue, a positive narrative. And you're going to say, I am strong. I have healed. I will not let those negative forces win. I will not project my anger outside of myself. I will not sit in the victimhood mentality of my wounds. And when we deep breathe and we focus our energy on what it is that we are going to create in our minds, which is a happy, healthy version of ourselves, then we can override the script. We can override the program. We can essentially throw a wrench into the dark force agenda's plans. We're going to end the day off. This is a beautiful way to end the day. We are going to end the day off with the moon trining Uranus. Uranus is the great awakener. He shows us from the higher realms of intelligence, where it is that we have to have a bird's eye view and observation perspective from our higher self in order to be the visionary that we have to be to project ourselves into imaginary land to the dream to the vision that we want so freaking badly to manifest so that we don't allow the present moment and the funky energy trying to throw us off our game do just that. This particular energy can feel a little bit electric. It is trying to wake us up. There is aha moments. 
this aha moment coming right after this beautiful opportunity for us to rise above this lower level egoic narrative that the dark force agenda is trying to spin right now. This is a huge, huge indicator that many of us are going to rise to the occasion, sit in our observation of our highest selves, sit in the highest narrative possible, project ourselves into the dream, into the vision that we want to manifest in the new earth, if that is what you're focused on. And emotionally speaking, we are breaking it down. We are focused in our narrative is healthy, our inner our dialogue is supportive. We are looking at the details of the situations that are popping off in the here and now. We're seeing it for the script that it is. And we are feeling in control. We are feeling in power because we are ahead of the game. When you know the game that is being played and you know the handbook, you know the rule book, you can always stay a couple of steps ahead. And this Uranian energy although likes to wake us up and shake us up, especially being in Taurus energy that is our physical circumstances where routines and our daily life and our relationships and our money matters are concerned. This is an aha moment where we can kind of reorganize and restructure our focus, our perspective to make sure that we're not getting rocked in the way that the dark force agenda wants to rock us. This shows us freedom. This shows us the path to liberation this shows us a new level of perception and understanding. And that, my friends, puts us in a very powerful position to not fall victim to the ugly, ugly games that the Dark Force Agenda are currently playing.